You were just a normal lad. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just our Paul. But we couldn't believe he was... It was a bombshell when it happened. On the 23rd of January, 2004, Paul Granger beat and strangled his estranged wife, Helen Marshall, at her sister's home in Leeds. He then attempted suicide. Paul, a 24-year-old member of the TA, denied murder but admitted attacking his wife. Upstairs, their two-year-old son, Adam, lay sleeping. In February 2005, he was found guilty of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility and sentenced to nine years imprisonment. The jury accepted that he had been severely depressed at the time of the killing. He were eight months old there. He were very demanding. I think that's why him and Gary got on so well. He had a lot of patience with him. Oh, being, being a lot older, he enjoyed Paul looking up to him as a brother. That's Gary's first motorbike. When Paul was 15, his older brother Gary was killed in a road traffic accident. When we lost Gary, I think I did become overprotective with Paul. It was my natural instinct as a parent. No, oh, so you just don't get over, is it? No. No, it isn't. But we did our best. That picture does upset me because even now I think of all the hopes you had at the time when they're growing up and you don't think they're going to turn out bad. You know you think they're well, going to do something. You wanted to be in the military, won't you? you know, like in the, in the army. Like the army, but not a murderer. And I feel so guilty. Paul left school with few qualifications. He joined the Territorial Army and met Helen Marshall. Helen fell pregnant with their son Adam and they married a year later. When Paul was diagnosed with depression, he stopped work to look after Adam and Helen went out to work. He would regularly go to his mum's house where Eileen would mind Adam. As soon as she was pregnant, she wanted to leave him. It was a rocky marriage, they weren't suited. But once Adam came along, it was too late. Paul would be in her life one way or another. The night she died, she had decided for good she wasn't going to be with him. And she came over here at tea time, put Adam to bed. I left for work. And I remember she was sorting out her stuff and going to watch telly. And that was the night he came for her. I finished work at half past ten and I don't think I'll ever forget what I saw. Helen suffered a fractured skull, severe bruising and a ruptured spleen. She'd been strangled and died of asphyxiation. I thought someone had broken in. It wasn't until, until later the police told us he'd done it. I had to move house after that. I didn't want to think my sister had suffered like that. She didn't deserve to go like that. Everything taken from her. All this rubbish she was seeing other men. I can't believe she's gone. The first reaction was to hope he hangs, but I didn't mean that. It was a shock, a great shock, that someone you cared for could do that. He was never in trouble before. He would have softened the blow if he had been. It was a shock. Our life had been on hold until the trial. That was the last time I saw Paul. I wanted to visit him in prison, but my acrophobia's got worse and Brian won't go. It is with you. Always. You'll forget then it'll creep up on you. Just when you're doing something and nothing can take it away that I'm the mother of a killer. He's left me with that legacy. It feels like we have lost him now, he's gone. Now we both have. But we've just got to get on with our own lives now. Because you go through a grief. I mean, you know, with the court case and the verdict, it made it final. But up until then, it was not knowing what was going to happen. I did feel terribly guilty. 
Now Helen was a, she's a lovely girl, and she was Adam's mother. Yeah, but did we bring up a wagon? Was it something we did? Yeah, I've just, I've had enough, I've just got to wash my hands of it. He slows down, and we just got to think of ourselves. And this is what I need to do, I keep telling you. Now we are put to a situation we could not control. I wanted to clear out his room, but I didn't just, you know, she just wants to keep it at ease. I'm like, just like Gary's room. We've lost them both. It's brought up a lot of grief to do with Gary, and that was nine years ago. All we have left is Adam, and we'll fight to get access to him. We've been punished for his crime, and that is not right. We're all living with it. I hate what he's done. But I don't hate him. He's my son and always will be. I haven't had any visitors so far, but um, it's all right. I mean, if, if you start to worry that they're going to turn up from the beginning of the day and then they don't turn up, you get annoyed that they didn't even bother, or they do. And when they leave, you just feel so down that it's not even worth it. I don't keep any pictures out of my little boy or anything. I just can't do it anymore. I keep all those things, my letters and everything. I keep them in here. My mum, like, she sent me a letter. Uh, I mean, like, she's not written before. But it says in here, where is it? You are always in my thoughts. You are my son and I love you. Nothing can take that away, Mum. And she's never said anything like that before. I think that's the first time she's ever said that I love you. I'm going to put it back now.